Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Yeah, so please only listen when you can safely close your eyes because you may find this recording a bit boring which is it's kind of a win-win situation for me because you can't fail really when you set out to do something boring <laughs> it's just if I repeat stuff that I've already said before, which is case of the, I suppose that's the meaning of repeating, isn't it? So if I repeat something from a pre previous recording, that's boring. If I tell you something about my life that's uninteresting, so you're not interested in, that's boring. So, you know, it's a good thing. If I say something that's maybe mildly amusing or interesting or that's also okay because you know I know that a lot of people listen to me for company I'm like a the unknown radio show secret it's a little secret don't tell anyone please I don't want I don't want, I don't want an audience <laughs> I'll uh I'll make do with my 600 people a day that listen and uh, that's it, don't want any more so um, I don't know if it's 600 people it's hard to tell it's really hard to know it's hard to know I worked it out didn't I the other day was it last month 5, 10, 18 it was 18,000 downloads in November. So I don't know how many people that is, though, for this particular, these recordings that are spread throughout the internet. So. Oh. So the thing. So I should just quickly mention that there are no adverts on any of my podcasts. Just to remind people of that, because um, I've taken them all off. So yeah. And the other thing is, if you do want to support this free service, you can go if you'd like to go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. Paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. And the link is on my website, jasonnewland.com. And before I was listening, before I was listening to this, oh my chair is so squeaky. I try not to move too much when I'm making recordings. You know, it's weird. I, people tell me sometimes that just hearing me kind of is a trigger to <laughs> be relaxed and sleepy and I seem to get the same response when I talk out loud I bore myself that's kind of how I realised I could do this because I've been in conversations with people in the past I'm talking like 20 years ago plus and I'd be talking to them and I'd see their eyes glaze over <laughs> so, and, it's, and it's on some ways it was deeply offensive <laughs> but on another side I could see the funny side to it and that's what's kept me going really is being able to see the funny side to even the horrible stuff and just you could literally glaze like a, a like a, a little sheet of water just sort of covers the the, the 
the bulb, and it's not a bulb, is it? The eye bulb, you know, the the eye. And you know that they're, they're thinking about something else. <laughs> they're kind of gone. That was before I did hypnosis. Before I even learnt about hypnosis. And it happened, I've mentioned this before, happened to a counsellor. Um, I had counselling in 1997 in probably, I don't know, what would it be, September time, October maybe? And this, I was talking to her and she fell asleep. I'm not even joking. I was there talking to her and she started and she asked me a question and I, I wasn't talking about anything boring either I was talking about you know <laughs> my issues I was talking about um, important stuff well important to me um, it's worth remembering that it's only really important to the person that's saying it isn't it but it was important to me and her eyelids started to go and I thought oh that's weird and she glazed over like her, you know, like she wasn't even there anymore. And again, I was deeply offended. <laughs> but really, not just amused, but also intrigued. Like, ah, this is weird. What's this about? So I continued talking to her. And then her eyes close a bit more, and then her eyes close completely. I mean, properly for I don't know a good couple of minutes. So it wasn't she didn't like fall into a sleep. She just had her eyes closed for about two, two, about two or three minutes. And I just sat there, and I started talking the biggest pile of crap you've ever heard. I was talking about UFOs, lawnmowers, just, 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 just rambling on, and she was just there. And then <laughs> I made a noise. And I kind of made, I increased the volume of my voice, and I kind of made a noise. And she's like suddenly, almost like, oh, what's going on? What's going? On? I didn't know where she was. And she said, "I'll oh, carry on. What were you saying?" I said. Yeah, I was just saying about when the aliens were probing me. Um, it was one of the best experiences of my life because even my doctor wouldn't do it, refused. But the aliens were fine. And then, uh, but then they got a little bit. Yeah, it was a heavy relationship. Yeah, they were a bit too clingy. Well, that's they, they, that's what they said about me actually. So they had to go back to their own planet. Um, and she was like, "What?" What are, you, what are you talking about? What? And uh, uh, that's kind of when I realised that I was perhaps the most boring person that's ever existed without even trying. And that was that was me talking about things that were and. Um, well, it was, you know, serious stuff, actually. I know I'm sort of joking about it, but it was quite... Um, it was serious enough to send me to go to counselling. You know, be sent by my doctor. <laughs> but it was... I just... I couldn't stop but see the funny side of it. And... To be fair, I used to do the same thing in 2006. And like early, like in the years, no, not 2006, 1996. I used to have a friend and we'd be talking, I'd talk to him and he'd glaze over. So I didn't really know, but I used to, I kind of feel it was just him because he was so used to spending time with me that I think he just switched off when I started talking 
and then he'd suddenly he'd come out of whatever sort of trance he was in and he'd say what were you talking about I said no we were just talking about the you said that you didn't want that money back that you lent me <laughs> it's just it's something silly like that I was like, but I never thought about it back then I never really sort of considered it and then in, when it happened in 97 near the end of 97 I thought oh it's weird and then in, two, in 1998 I bought my first hypnosis book and started thinking oh maybe I've been doing this all along that would explain why nobody likes me to be a passenger in their car oh. so yeah so that's kind of and then it's not just that though it's it's a culmination of also being around lots of really boring people people that I got bored with or seeing other people being bored by other people um, even though they weren't necessarily boring people so that's a distinction because when someone you can have someone who's I've been bored by people that have had the most exciting lives I've had conversations with people that have travelled the world and they want to tell me about it and I find myself completely bored because I don't relate to what they're talking about and I'm not interested uh, necessarily you know I'm just I might be in some situations but the opposite to that was when I went to the pub with a friend who I just started working with and he was this is when I was doing agency work and he was a friend of my team leader and he said oh, I've got some stories to tell you about him so I had to go out with him for a drink I had to and he was I was what 20 23 he was probably probably about my age now maybe younger maybe older but he was probably in his late 40s he was practically blind and he was one of the most enjoyable people I've ever spent time with uh, in my life in my whole of my life that that evening in the pub was one of my one of the highlights because he had me in stitches with his stories he was he was a storyteller like a proper storyteller and it was so funny I've already told one of his stories before so I won't tell it again um it's basically one about someone who went into a pub and caused complete chaos and then goes back later and sort of says, oh, sits down and says, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> and just the way I say it isn't one percent what he, you know, he, he it's very, very funny, very funny. The alcohol probably helped, um, but also he was telling me stories about my supervisor which was gold that was it was it's like a little treasure trove <laughs> going back to work the next day oh Arthur you right you right you right mate yeah <laughs> in the SAS was you <laughs> you was in the SAS okay of course you were <laughs> I know the truth so it's it was it was interesting to uh that kind of situation I find interesting but then it's when it's not forced on you because that was a, a mutual exchange of like let's go to the, for a pub so if you go to the pub with someone or go to dinner with someone if you know them you've kind of given each other permission to talk about stuff haven't you and you've sort of going to listen if you're at a party and someone just walks up to you and starts telling you about their tortoise collection it's like oh okay or you know let me tell you about the time I went 
to the zoo. Right. Uh, and yeah, it was. I've had that a few times, and it, I think I've also been that person as well. But you know, I had to learn. I had learned years ago to stop telling people about what I do, or you know, about my interests, because my interests don't interest anybody else, really. I'm not sure there are people out there. Obviously, there's other people that love, you know, um, hypnosis, and I love boxing, and I love uh, Andre the Ferret. You know, there's it's not you know, reading, comedy. You know, there's, there's the kind of things that I'm really into uh, quite a bit, and have been in my life. Used to be really into martial arts when I was younger. But no one is no one's really shown much interest. I think it might be down to the de- the delivery. You know, so I said, oh, what do you do? Yeah, I go, I do karate in the evenings. It's uh, really good. I go on a Tuesday and a Thursday uh, evening. Uh, it starts at half past six and usually finishes about eight. But that's just for the beginners. Uh, those that have been going for quite some time, maybe um, they've got a couple of belts, you know, they've had a couple of gradings, and they can then stay till nine o'clock and get to train with the higher grade belts and, uh, you know, get to do some sparring with the black belts. And it, But I'm not quite at that level yet. They, uh, my uh, teacher or Sifu or how it depends what you want to call him, uh, Paul, he uh, says that he doesn't want me to stay um, uh, with everyone else. He'd rather me just go home at eight if that's at all possible, and uh, because he felt that. Um, it'd be distracting because I've got such high skill and I'd show off the black belts who just feel intimidated by how wonderful I am and I said is that the truth and he said no it's because we don't really want you here I said okay he said but you can turn up for the 6.30 to 8 because you know we need your money and also we don't have to talk to you because you know, there's a big group of people and, you know, you can kind of mingle in, but the eight to nine, there's a f- only a few of us, um, and we kind of, you had a, we had a little vote and uh, decided that you're not invited. I said, oh, okay, thanks. I said, that's, that's okay. It's fine. Um, but, you know, the, can, could you like to pay your money now for the next three months? I said, yeah, yes, yeah, that's, that's fine, that's okay. And uh, so I do that every Tuesday and Thursday. And I have the the gi, we call it the gi, which is the uniform, and go into the dojo, which is the, it's the hall. I mean, basically, it's it's a sports hall in a school but we call it the dojo and we bow before we go in out of respect uh, for the dojo, the teacher and everyone in there and always bow to the teacher and uh, and then he he bows but um, I never really see him bowing because he bows after I bow I see kind of a movement of his upper body so I assume he's I assume he's bowing unless he's just looking at the top of my head I don't know looking for nits but he is a lovely man and it's a, it's a good experience because I get to go to a different school uh, to the one I used to go to when I was actually at school and as I said Tuesday, Thursday evening 
What's really weird about it, what's really strange is in the winter, it's when it's cold outside, it's actually a really good temperature. It's cold when we first get there and we turn the heaters on and then we have to turn the heaters off and open the windows after about an hour, half an hour. And I, I said, we, you turned the heaters off, but why have you opened the windows? And um, my teacher, trainer said, it's because you, you're so smelly. And I said, oh, okay. I said, is, is it the farts or the sweat? He's, he said, well, we can't tell. I said, what do you mean we can't tell? He said, well, we got together last week to try and figure it out. And uh, Terry, Paul and Steve said that he thought it might be the sweat. Andrew, John and uh, Tracy thought it was possibly the farts. Uh, but then Jonathan, Claire, or who else is there? Trevor and Bob thought it was possibly both. It was like a mixture. And then Anthony said, well, there might be a way of testing it is by doing some kind of, uh, a t you know, like testing it uh, scientifically. And the teacher said, how? And he said, I don't know. He said, well, why did you bring it up then? Why did you mention scientific testing if you don't know how to do it? He said, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to be part of the group trying to fit in and the teacher said oh, fair enough I do understand that's, that's that's fine I used to be like that when I was a beginner and Anthony said I'm, I'm not a beginner am I I've been coming for five years and the teacher said yeah but compared to me you're a beginner I've been doing this for 26 years and Anthony said yeah but no oh, not really, do you know? And the teacher said, do you want to fight about it? you want to have a punch up? And Anthony said, no, not really. He said, why not? He said, because you're the teacher. You know, I've got respect for you as a teacher. And the teacher said, well, if you've got respect for me, why are you talking up? Why are you, why are you, you know, verbally, why are you being verbal in front of everyone? Why are you challenging me in front of everyone? If you if you want to challenge me, let's take the challenge. Let's do it. And then he said, "No, no, what are you what are you talking about? This, this this isn't this isn't part of the plan. I just came here because I wanted to feel welcome somewhere. Feel like I, I belonged somewhere." And the teacher said, "Well, you don't belong here now." And Anthony said, P "Please." And uh, the teacher said, no. And Anthony said, please? Oh, I'll buy you some crisps. A packet of salt and onion Walker's crisps. And the teacher thought about it for a minute. And he said, make it ready salted and I'll think about it. So Anthony went and got the crisps. And that was it really. But yeah, I, I go there every Tuesday and Thursday. And it's quite good. On a Friday evening, um, one of the instructors, like the younger one, started up his own like little Friday night group. And I go there with my little brother. And... Uh, it's all right, you know. It's 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 like a little shack, like a little uh, brownies hut or something. I don't know, clubs, scout club hut, like a big, like a big shed. Really, that's all they are. I suppose. Really, you could say a big shed. A cabin is just a big shed, and a house is just a big cabin. So it's, it depends how you look at it, really, isn't it? Because. Um, 
it's how things evolve, isn't it? How something small evolves into something big, even though that small thing might still exist. Because they say, you know, how if human beings evolved from monkeys, why do monkeys still exist? Then I say, how come we've got fishes of different sizes? See, that doesn't, is that, that, I think that, that brings that question to a, to a ultimate com- completion. Although not everyone agrees. Some people say, yeah, well, what do you mean different size fish? I say, well, there's different size fish. You've got, you've got whales, you've got sharks, you've got octopuses. Octopus is not even the same size. It's not even, doesn't even have a shape. Yeah, well, octopuses do have a shape. They've got tentacles and, yeah, but it doesn't really have a shape. If something can squeeze through a keyhole, then it doesn't really have a shape. So, what, so if you can walk through a door, it means you're not a shape. You're a door shape, are you? Is an octopus a keyhole shape? No, I didn't say an octopus was a keyhole shape. I said the octopus didn't have a shape. But what is your logic on that one, though? What do you mean? Well, octopuses have a shape. All you've got to do is look at a picture of an octopus. Or octopi. No, I wouldn't want to eat it. I wouldn't want one in a pie. And we both laughed. So they've got tentacles. They've got a big head. Lots of tentacles and stuff. And they can move. Just like a lot of animals can move through small spaces. It's just like a human. We can move through small spaces. Yeah. But not smaller than our body. No, but you know, you you could you could get through a door that's four foot tall. I wouldn't. No, I'd bang my head on the on the wall. You could get through it though. No, I couldn't. I'd bang my head. On. How could I get through a four foot high um, doorway? That's impossible. No, you could get through it. No, I couldn't. How? Well, you get down on your knees. First of all, I'm not getting down on my knees. I don't feel that way about you. No, no, I'm talking about the doorway. You get down on your knees and you just crawl through the four foot whole doorway, high doorway. Or just crouch, especially with you because you're only short. I said I'm five foot eight. Five foot eight. Although it's not super tall, I'll admit that. I'll admit that. I will. I'll let you that. I'll let you have that one. But five for a is not hugely short. Four for eight is fairly short. Five for eight is okay. So is four for eight okay? I don't think it matters what height anyone is because it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter at all. So stop being prejudiced against height because I personally don't care how tall someone is, whether they're three foot two or seven foot nine. I do not care at all. What if you was hiring a plasterer? What? Well, if you was hiring a plasterer and you didn't live in a doll in a doll's house, you'd you'd want <laughs> a doll's a doll's what do you mean a doll's house? Well you know, a little house. You know, if you had a, a normal size wall and you had someone at three foot tall, you wouldn't want them plastering your your wall, would you? So first of all, I wouldn't care who plastered my wall. 
the main thing is that it's done properly, that the job's done. It doesn't matter who they are or how tall they are. Yeah, but you don't want just the skirting boards plastered, do you? I said, first of all, I might just want that done. You don't know. You don't know me. You don't know my skirting boards. So don't judge. Secondly, have you never heard of the word stilts? Plasterer can wear stilts. And then when it got to the, the higher bits, a ladder. So stilts for the middle part of the of the of the wall, and um, in fact you get those bouncy shoes, can't you? No, but it just seems a bit when you just like get rid of them. They turned up with stilts on. I said, listen, have you ever seen a plasterer? She just she said, no, no, I haven't, why? I said, well, a plasterer is super strong. If you have a plasterer turn up, no matter how tall they are, the simple fact is their upper body strength, especially their shoulders and their arms, super strong because they're putting that plaster onto the wall above their head. Even tall people will be raising their arm above their head and doing that all, you know, every day of their work in life. They are super strong. How do you know so much about plastering? Well, it's interesting that you say that. Let me tell you. When I was at school, um, I think it was, I was about, four t yeah, I'd have been 14. And, I went to, I did, I don't know what they called it, uh, work experience, I think it was called, because it was experience in work, yeah. Mm. And I had a choice of a couple of things because I was doing work experience in a two different places previously, which is part of a, that was like volunteering. Uh, one was a residential home, and another one was a placement I had was a child's playgroup. And both of those places, I went with somebody from school and would spend maybe the afternoon there or something, once a week, or three hours, I don't know, something like that. And, but the work experience actually was, for, I think it was for two whole weeks. Might have been one week pretty sure it was two whole weeks but it might have been one but it was solid you know didn't have to go to school at all for the whole time and I got a choice of places to go to and they said do you want to go into a residential care home like what you've been doing in class and I said no and they said why is it uh, is it do you find a bit maybe emotional draining or you find uh, that you just care too much and it's hard to see people suffering and I said no I just hate old people and they <laughs> I, did, I didn't say that I said um, I'd like to do something different because I don't I don't see myself if I'm going to do work experience I'd like to do something that I'm perhaps thinking of doing when I leave school, which makes sense. Uh, to me, it made sense. And um, they said, well, what about the working with the children? And I said, no. No, it's, it's, 
you know, I don't can't see myself doing that as a job either. Plus, in them days, basically, and it still is today, mainly female-oriented work. And statistically, it's mainly just like primary school teachers are mainly female. There are males that do it, but it's just just the way it is in this country, where I am. Squeaky chair. In them days, I don't think anybody, there's never been a a male person ever do that job. Like in a play school, you know, when it's kind of like the preschool thing, classes. So I just, nah. Plus it was a long walk. And, um, Although I did enjoy it, to be fair. Not the walk, but I quite enjoyed doing it. And I I became quite close to the person I was doing it with. And this girl got on quite well with her. She hadn't spoken for four years. All through school, never spoke to anyone. And then I'm out of school with her and she don't stop talking. Eventually, after I, I break the ice. I think it kind of I use my superpowers in the opposite way. So instead of boring her, I kind of thawed her out. I think she was already bored of everything, and my <laughs> my chat to her, she just gave up and just just like just talked to me. She she couldn't yeah she couldn't win. She, <laughs> I don't know, but she, we got on really well, which is weird. Um, but anyway, I said, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I want to do something that will be interest. That I would find interesting, perhaps, maybe something a bit physical because I'm not really academic. Who would have known that I'd end up being a academic genius? But you know, didn't realise that at the time, and. Uh, I'm joking about that and she the whoever it was in charge they offered me they said well you can go to a building firm and I thought my dad would like that because he's he's in that game and I thought okay so I went to this place it was called White's pretty sure it's called White's building contractors or something like that and I would say, apart from, I think during my younger years, well, actually, throughout my whole, I've never had a career, uh, really. I've had jobs. I was, I had a career as a counsellor, but that was quite short-lived. That only lasted a few years. But out of all the jobs I've had, I think those two weeks with that um, that firm, that that building firm, was the best one, two of the best two weeks of my life, of my working life. And there's a few reasons behind that when I think about it. There was the freedom for the first time. You know, suddenly I had freedom for two two weeks, no school, no family. So it wasn't I wasn't at home, it wasn't the holidays, so I didn't have to spend time with family. It was a school day. But I wasn't at school. And I sat in this office and it was cold. It was in the winter. And it was snowing and everything. It was really pretty, pretty. And I enjoyed it because they left me on my own quite a lot to look after the phones. So to answer the phone and um, take messages. And I've done that a lot over the years. But that was the first time I'd ever done that 
and I was just sitting there having the time of my life absolutely beautiful it was and there was also a receptionist there as well but she she took advantage not took advantage but she took um, well took advantage of the fact that I was there so she could go into town and probably get Christmas presents or you know stuff like that uh, and I was happy about that because I wanted to be left alone which was weird because we ended up working together in a chip shop she was really lovely um, and everybody that I worked with was lovely they were rude a bit because they were builders and they were quite um, had quite rude conversations but that that was kind of my level anyway, really. And oh, Andre's just appeared. That's it. You're going to do a big poo now while I'm on the phone. Yeah, good boy, Andre. Yeah. It looks like he's doing the splits. <laughs> Bless him. Um, yeah so I, I, I turned up I think I had to have a like a pre-interview before going along and I, they said what do you want to do when you grow up and I said I don't know they said and so why, why have you applied to do this for two weeks I said uh, I don't know they said oh, it's ok so do you, can you get here by nine o'clock I said, uh, uh, suppose. I said, excellent. So I did it, and it was only around the corner from where I lived, which was nice. So it might have been eight o'clock, I don't remember. But those were the days when I was used to getting up early and it didn't bother me. Well, I was, God, Andre's made a proper stink. He's let off a stink. He doesn't do it very often, but he's literally stunk the whole room out. Like, really off. <laughs> oh, God, it's really smelly. I don't know what that was about. He usually only does it when he's, like, angry or frustrated or something, but I don't know what I've done. To, I don't think I've done anything to upset him. Oh, maybe he's just hungry and there's no food he's got dry food but he needs a dry food to even out the wet food consist consistency for his tummy I think he's just woken up grumpy because he was I just heard him jump off the bed so he's been fast asleep for hours on my bed or inside the bed under the covers I don't know where and then he's come in here, done a poo, and it's like, and then he, and it's there's this, the smell of the, it's not that, it's the smelly bit, because that don't really smell. It's him letting off a stink. He's, uh, phew. But he doesn't do it very often. He used to do it a lot when he was younger. I remember once, I remember when I first got him his cage, like the big cage. And I remember putting it up and just watching him. And he was trying to figure out how to get inside, but he couldn't. Because he'd not been in it before. And he was walking around the sides of it. And it kept going. He looked right up at me when I did that. that's the sound that he makes when he's angry <laughs> and he was letting off the worst it's almost you could see the smell just rising off of him <laughs> and eventually hello mate hello do you want to get daddy cuddles 
Thank you, Daddy Cuddles. Hey. Eh? No. There's been times when, and I say it doesn't happen very often, but there has been times when he's jumped on me, and you know I'm just cuddling him, and he's let off a stink, and I've had to take my t-shirt off, and because it's just so. Oh. Or I mean, it's almost skunky. It's still in the air. It's weird. That's the worst what he's done for ages. Why does he have to do it while I'm on the? Let's say on the phone. While I'm on the phone. When I'm while I'm creating a glorious recording. So I turn up for this. Um, <sighs> for this work experience and they had me doing a few things um, I think they had me sorting out some receipts putting stuff in order you know um, invoices a little bit of stuff like that in the office and then they had me tidying up uh, there was a massive pile of bricks in the yard so they had me sorting through the bricks and to take away the bricks that were usable from the ones that were broken and then sorting out the red ones from the white ones for whatever you know and put them in different piles I'm pretty sure some of that was just kind of a joke you know they didn't really need me to do all that but I was happy because I was doing something you know I quite I enjoyed it so I just got on with it and it was, it was just nice to do something and not be criticised. It was, you know, they, they didn't criticise me once. It was lovely. And upstairs, they said, "Oh, you can spend the day with the carpenter." And upstairs was a carpenter. He had the whole of the upstairs floor, and he had all his machines, and he was making doors and windows and stuff like that, like window frames rather and door frames and he was he was lovely as well and he had I, I was like sweeping up after him and uh, trying to trip him up you know get him to fall into the saw you know just general stuff and he was really friendly they were all really nice and at the end of it I'll be completely honest with you I didn't want to stop. I wanted to stay there forever. That's it. in my mind. That's what I wanted. I wanted to stay working there and let them train me up. I didn't care if I spent the next ten years sorting out bricks. It really didn't bother me. I just wanted to work there because they were so nice. I liked the atmosphere, and I could be trained as a builder. They could put me on a apprentice or something like that and they did say to me I also oh yeah but I'll tell you the bit that they, the, the boss said to me when I leave school come and see him and they'll sort something out for me to come and work there as a on the YTS or apprentice or something like that and when I did leave school they couldn't take me on because they were closing. So that was, yeah, you know, it was very disappointing. But a couple of things that happened when I was working there, I got to work with a plasterer, and he was really cool. He was one of the coolest people. He was very tall actually, but. I don't think it had anything to do with, you know, it doesn't matter how tall you are because it's how good you are, isn't it, at the job. And but he was about nine foot tall, which was probably useful for doing the ceiling. And he was also a part-time fireman or firefighter. And he 
he got a call out while I was with him. So I, what I was doing, I was mixing the plaster for him. And what's interesting, <laughs> it's not interesting at all, but there's a texture that you have when you make cakes. There's a texture that you have when you make batter for frying fish. There's a texture for concrete. There's a certain texture for plaster. And once you know what that texture is, you just repeat it over and over again. There's a certain thickness. There's a certain when you, you know, you lift it up and you let it drop and you see it sink gently into it and you know it's the right texture. I learned that when I made batter every day for two years. I learned that when I was making cakes at school, uh, when I worked in the bakery, the the mixture of the like the bread, um, some of the, the mixture, you know, the eggs and the water, and the milk rather. And the same as was with the, the plaster as well. So I learned how to do the plaster and get it at the proper consist consistency, constituency. And I thought I quite like to be a plasterer. And then he had to rush off to do some thingy. And he said, you can go home if you want. I said, no, I'd rather just stay here and uh, try and see if there's any jewelry worth stealing. And he said, what? I said, I said, just what I'd rather uh, help to fill up the skip with rubbish and stuff. So I did. So I did that. And the another day I was with the um, bricklayer. I think there might have been a couple of bricklayers. And he was really rude. He was, But he lived opposite where I lived. So he lived in the same road. So I guess he probably knew my dad. And he was very funny. And I started thinking perhaps I'd like to be a, a bricklayer as well. Why does Andre have to make so much noise? You hear him, it's like, it's unnecessary. It's, un it's unnecessary. Why is he doing that right now? Oh my goodness. So there's this box with Lego pictures all around. And it's like a big, it's not big but it's got a lot of his toys and stuff in it so now he's trying to get inside it and I've never I can't even remember the last time I saw him even go near it and he's just jumped off of it and he did a somersault he basically did a backward somersault <laughs> it's like what on earth <sighs> now he's run off gone into the, the kitchen to probably play with his uh, witch's broomstick which he didn't touch at all during Halloween and he won't touch it unless he's not allowed to touch it so when I gave it to him he weren't interested but when I put it in the kitchen and I stand it up like it's something that I'm going to be using that's when he goes in and he knocks it down and no matter how many times I stand it up I come into the kitchen and he'll have knocked it down I hear him knock it down he's just he's obsessed with knocking things over he's like a he's almost like he's got a pinball mentality like inside his brain just has to knock things over it's a walking talking pinball machine there you go 
pinball is it bowls ball tin pinball ten pill ten ten pill bone tin ball pin bowling is it something like that so that was good and uh Oh, he's doing it now. He's doing it right now. I don't know if you can hear it from the kitchen. That's his favourite thing. I say that, but how do I know what his favourite thing is? I think it's one of his favourite things would be to... He likes sniffing the drain outside. You know, the drains in the gutters, you know, in the road. His biggest, I think his biggest dream is to get inside one of those drains. How on earth he'd get out again, I don't know, but he's, he's, he's drawn to it. Absolutely drawn to it. Yet, he's fussy about what he eats. It's, it's unbelievable. Just don't take it at all. I do know why. So yesterday I made three recordings actually. I did the, the uh, what was it? Sleep hypnosis weekly number twenty nine. I did the deep sleep whisper hypnosis number I think it was number 60 no I think it was a number 168 something like that and then I did um, relax and hate hypnosis for uh, stress and anxiety and panics I did that that was number 60 I think that was number 68 I think so I didn't do a let me bore you to sleep yesterday but three recordings is easily enough for one day and I've been working on a website I have and I'm practically asleep as I'm saying these words but the 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 um, 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 I'm just trying to update some of the parts of it to make it operational if that makes sense so there's a few days I'm not I'm not going to put too much too much pressure on myself to get it finished but it, you know it'll be done by the end of the week by the end of next week the, the bits that I'm doing now and just also to let you know that I do have a special Facebook page for the Let Me Boy You To Sleep podcasts you can just go into Facebook put in let me bore you to sleep search for it or if you go to my website on the first page there is I've got a thing that says Facebook pages and it says it's got a link to my personal Facebook page my hypnosis page and my let me bore you to sleep page so that one if you click on there you can like this and the only posts I really ever put on there are the latest recordings of these posts these uh, podcasts I'll occasionally put I might put a picture of Andre on there or something uh, or you know uh, an update on the podcasts and stuff but I never post any of my other podcasts on there just to let me pull you to sleep so if this is the thing that you're more interested in I use the word interested but you know the one that you'd 
prefer over the others then it might be useful because it's easier to navigate I suppose also all of my recordings are on my website for the let me bore you to sleep recordings I, up I update it every time I make a new one so thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself be e e e e e cuz you deserve to be happy you deserve to be happy yes you do you really do lots of love bye